Good to see you. It's my pleasure. This autumn in New Hampshire, John McCain was the underdog to George W. Bush's ubermensch. I have not been smoking anything so strong that would indicate that I'm assured of victory yet. This winter, though, is another story. In fact, McCain has morphed into the top dog, the media darling, the maverick candidate New Hampshire voters love to champion. At the Mill Falls Inn in Meredith, McCain basked in his newfound glory. You're very popular at the moment, very in fashion, but you could also fall out of fashion. How do you prevent yourself from being just a fad? Well, first of all, it's nice to be in fashion. That was not the case some months ago. Uh, second of all, you, you've got to keep up with the issues. You've got to keep uh, communicating. You've got to keep up the format, which the people of New Hampshire expect, and that is a lot of interaction, a lot of town hall meetings. Thank you very much. So, uh, I don't know if I can maintain this or not, but I know what I think we need to do in order to maintain it. McCain's bus, dubbed the Straight Talk Express, is an apt metaphor for his campaign and its appeal here. This whole concept of you being a straight talker, how has this served you in your life and how has it hindered you? I think the mood of the country now is, not just New Hampshire, but I think the mood of the country is they're tired of all this spinning. They think that spinning, they correctly uh, have uh, come to the conclusion that spinning is lying. And so many people have come up to me and said, I don't agree with you on this issue, but at least I know where you stand. So one of the reasons why we may be resonating is because they don't want uh, a, a spun story. They'd rather hear the truth and make their own judgments than this spinning. McCain's willingness to take on the establishment and tackle campaign finance reform draws cheers from many New Hampshire voters. But it also raises a crucial question. If McCain were to win the presidency, could he lead a Congress he's at times vilified? I think they would go along with me for the same reason why the uh, Congress goes along with any newly elected president. I'm, I'm campaigning asking for a clear mandate from the American people to reform the institutions of government and reform the campaign finance system. I can go to Congress and say, look, I campaigned on this. The American people endorsed my proposals. This isn't any feel-good, amorphous campaign. This campaign is very specific. According to an article in the Washington Post, there's a core group of Republican senators that, quote, hate you. If you became president, how would you work with these people? Well, I, I'm not sure that they're, quote, hate me. Uh, there are many uh, Republican senators and some Democrat senators who are very concerned about the situation if I were president of the United States because the status quo would not prevail. I would break the grip of the lobbyists over Washington and the big money, and that frightens a lot of people. It also attracts a lot of people. Uh, I think he's leading here because I think Bush is, represents a typical politician who when asked a question, doesn't answer it, and McCain, when asked a question, does answer it. So I think people like his, his upfrontness. Being a POW is a very difficult experience, so it probably means he's had his trial by fire. He wouldn't need to prove it as a president. I think he's a man of great passion and great conviction, and I don't think that those people are necessarily the diplomatic people that are easiest to live with, but on the other hand, that's what you want in a leader. You want someone who's going to stand in up and tell you the truth. McCain knows he's merely the gentleman-in-waiting throughout most of the United States. His hope is that a win in New Hampshire and in the South Carolina primary that follows will generate enough buzz and cash to ride the momentum as far as he can go. For New Hampshire Roundtable, this is Jenny Atiyah.